What is up guys, Doe here again, bringing you the like fourth take of this one tutorial, this one complicated tutorial, and it'll be over motion tracking and After Effects, and so I'll be done in After Effects, I will not be using this in After Effects tracker, I'll be using the camera tracker because this is practically like Buju for After Effects, except you can't switch from after you can't like take the data that you get in here with camera tracker and bring it into Cinema 4D. So um, what you're gonna want to do is you're going to want to make. Let's delete this for now. You're gonna want to go to your project. You want to import your clip, and then oh, delete that too. Yes, I want to delete it. So you should it should probably look like this for you now. You just imported your clip. It's 59.94. Make a new composition. Um, make this 59.94 uh, bring in your clip and then you'll have this and I'm going to scale this up to like 102 and so we get rid of the black lines I'm gonna cut this to two seconds just to make this tutorial a little faster um, and then you're gonna want to add camera tracker and you're also going to want to make sure that the resolution is on full for now because um if it's not, then the points for, with the camera tracker will get all messed up. There will be a bigger margin for error. And I'll try to explain this after I track the features. So, and when you click, I'm not going to skip through this because um, I'm not in the mood for it. Try, I've done this tutorial four times already, so um, I'll just try to explain camera tracker while it's doing it. So, camera tracker, like I said before, it's like Buju. And what this will do is it will like this it's like Buju's track features it takes all the features in the clip and it will motion track them so that when you can actually select an origin kind of like Buju or after you solve the camera you can select an origin and then create the scene and then hold on wait no I think you create the scene and then you select a point and make it your origin so that when you bring in text to that origin um, and then make it 3D, like a 3D layer. It will stick to that one point, um, like track-wise. It, it's not gonna like just stay hovering over that one point. You can change the position, but like if it'll move, I don't know. If the positioning, it'll move along with the single points positioning. If it, if that makes any sense to you, um. So yeah, um, now we're just gonna wait the extra 30 frames that it has left. And that's pretty fast, it was faster than any other tutorial, I think, um, the camera tracker. So after it's done, it'll, uh, it'll have this, you can open that and it'll have this, actually, you, you don't even need to mess with that. So after that, you wanna click solve camera, and it'll solve this, and then what? This is why you have it on full. Look, the margin is 0.737. If you had it on a quarter, it would probably be like four. That's how bad it would be. So you want to have it on full so you can get the most accurate data as possible. So click OK, and then you want to create a scene with it. And then you have this scene. And um, I'm going to pick a point of origin. So I'm just going to left click on this. And then if I have a Mac, so it would be a command click, command left click on it. If you had a PC, it would be like a control click, I think. And you want to set this as or as the origin. So it'll make your null object be positioned along that one point right here. So. After that is done, we are going to add text, and I'm going to make it say tutorial. And then get your selection tool, and we want to make sure the text is at the very top, and click 3D layer, and it'll disappear from the screen. So what you're going to want to do is maybe go to 1.5, and here's where the text is. So I'm going to scroll up a little bit, grab the text, and put it back on the screen. So. I'm going to scale this text down a little bit, maybe right here. And if we look at it now, the rotation and the 
uh, scale. It all changes along with the null object, the positioning, everything. But you can also manually change it if you want to. So I want to change the positioning. I'll position it right here. Z rotation I want to change. I want to have it go up like this along this plane, let's say. So that's fine. Y. Do I have a problem with the Y? Um, I don't think I do. So I'll just... I mean, you can change all of this. You can change the scale. But I right here, I like you. So I'm just going to keep it like that, and it will track it. And it's pretty accurately tracked. I think this is maybe even more accurate than Buju. So, um... That's how you motion track in uh, After Effects alone. So after you make this, you can just maybe this is maybe this will be like your final comp, and then you can just go to your final comp, drag in your composition one, and then here it is. Add a nice CC color correction to that, and then you'll be good to go. So that was my in After Effects motion tracking tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that it was helpful. I will be including a link to how to get this. It'll be to another um it'll link you to another video and I use it so I know that it works. I used it like two days ago. And I will link you to the download clip of the actual cinematic that I used. Um uh thanks goes to Rob Taser, Tazor, I don't know, he's German. And uh I found out about found out about this effect from him. And this was a I mean this tutorial was pretty close to how his tutorial was except uh, it was basically the same so if you haven't checked him out you should he's an editor for optic I think and he's really really good so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial again um, and I hope that you guys aren't mad at me for not doing a Buju to Cinema 4D to add back to After Effects I'll be doing that tomorrow for you guys Thanks for watching, leave uh, feedback, because I love feedback, and thank you for 275, 277 subscribers. Peace out.